Well, everyone, it's time to crack open a can of worms. Let's talk about the spirit of independent video games. That's what Team 17 claim that they are, when in fact it is the 200 million pound net worth CEO uh, seemingly being um, a little bit iffy. A little bit yes. iffy, certainly uh, if Eurogame was reporting, is anything to go by. And it's one of those funny things. I heard many great things about Debbie Bestwick. Um, you know, in, in the past, she's often held up as being, you know, a very major player in the UK games industry, which she absolutely is. And she's an interesting figure herself, having been, you know, at Team 17 from the earliest yes. days. Founded it, yep. Um, you know, founding person, then in the more recent history, actually bought out the other founders, <laughs> uh, meaning that, uh, well, you know, she is, uh, she is at the helm of the company. And what was interesting here is, you know, often you hear a very large company like an Activision Blizzard is very distributed. And, you know, the, the reporting of this, it won't be going a great deal into, say, the personal actions of Bobby in the office. Yeah. What I found to be interesting here is that evidently there is a level of general disgruntlement within the staff at this company that meant that a few of them have, you know, they've kind of told on the boss to the press. And certainly yeah. this this is leading to what's going to be a pretty... Uh, a pretty spicy little problem actually yeah i think it's interesting because team 17 are uk based and a, like Eurogamer obviously being you know uk based they don't often really get to step into the realm of uh kind of industry reporting often at least i don't like you know that's generally where uh bloomberg or you know kotaku's writers would generally or some of polygons would step in because it's american companies but we get this big thing from Eurogamer, and i was actually seriously impressed obviously i love their work with digital foundry i love how like i, yeah. I like your gamer overall uh it's a couple of their um uh, mishaps over the years uh that are like um, but <laughs> you know the this in particular was really impressive and really in depth yeah. oh, q and wesley would be best of friends absolutely um now imagine this right you are at the helm of a big company okay just put yourself in these shoes you're at the helm of a big company so you are important your staff are looking up to you for a direction uh, now, you've just went public. You've aggressively ramped up how many projects your company's taking on. So things are getting really serious. But you haven't necessarily been able to increase your roster of people enough to actually do all of those projects. And this has meant that, oh, your glass door ratings are going down. There's quite a few disgruntled employees who they love their coworkers. They think there's lots of great people there, but they're looking at the decisions of management and kind of scratching their heads. They're maybe thinking, ah, these are going too fast. You know, the team can't handle this. You're going to burn our people out. So you're in this situation where maybe through a bunch of pressures and stuff, you've really grown the company. There's issues. You've got disgruntled staff. And what do you do? You launch a big NFT project. Of course, you launch a big NFT project months after the ship has sailed. And there's a different discussion to be had, but we all know that public opinion has solidified generally around this issue, mm -hmm. meaning that announcing these meta worms is absolutely not the play. Obviously, if you do this, the first thing that's going to happen is leaks. <laughs> Anyone who thinks strategically should know this. And I would say that a company uh, founder, a, a sort of an entrepreneur, a CEO, uh, somebody like Debbie Bestwick here, or of course, um, Andrew Wilson, who is of, of EA, you should be a strategic enough thinker to understand what's going to go on and to understand that the grand plans in your head obviously have to mesh with reality. And of course, maybe you'll be a student of history. You'll be thinking about the Schlieffen plan. You'll be thinking of plans for victory and things like this and understanding that plans don't survive contact with the enemy and that it's very important to think pragmatically about all of these things and how they go. Well, unfortunately, that's the pickle that uh, Mrs. Bestwick has found herself in where, yeah, none of none of that intelligent thinking that I just mentioned was done, and uh, the bed has completely been shat. The company has leaked to the press, and it is absolutely damning, including personal anecdotes that can be read in multiple different ways, mm -hmm. but I think very common, uh, you know, if you use meme as the uh, sort of the definition of a meme uh, as per Dawkins, who actually coined the term, uh, the things that are being memed around, mm -hmm. not ideal. So we're going to get into this, and honestly, it's pretty damn rough, everyone. So, the NFT stuff dragged down the Team 17 name. One, of course, employees had, had worked for. People end up feeling attached to the company. I mean, it's fucking worms, right? 
We all remember playing Worms when we were kids. So more than a dozen employees said they felt left down by how uh, Team 17 handled the announcement and that the company's refusal to listen to staff concerns added additional pressure to an already worn through thin workforce. And that's the thing. People tried to sound the alarm bells with mm-hmm. this NFT project. A situation where people are they are loyal to their colleagues, they're proud of the work they do, they are aghast at seeing the thing that they've helped to build be dragged through the mud when they themselves knew this would happen, warned management. They're in a situation where their workloads have been rising. As I mentioned there, the company goes public, it gets more aggressive on its targets. So they're feeling screwed over. They're feeling more alienated uh, from management than ever. Awful. Now, there's a big thing here, and this is something that a lot of Activision Blizzard staff will have felt. Hmm. They're not getting a great deal, But the man at the top, Bobby Kotick, is getting an incredible deal. Extremely well financially compensated. Yep. So now we're in this situation where Team 17 have just been shedding team members. They're pissed off that their salaries are are low, long hours, HR concerns. Uh, And it's a situation, too, where, you know, Debbie Beswick is held up as, you know, woman in gaming, number one. Look at this. Female gaming CEO. She's an OBE. That stands for the most excellent order of the British Empire. Mm-hmm. Whew, boy, howdy. Yeah, uh, yeah. Worth 200 million and people feel underpaid at the company. That's just not moral. It's mm. exactly what we say about Bobby yep. applies here. It's not cool. That's for sure. And if this company's doing well enough that suddenly your personal worth is like 200 million then. Yeah, that's Come on, yeah, man. Yeah, one of the one of the threads that we'll get into here is that they've been picking up more and more work. They've been, you know, obviously Maybe because Team 17 is uh, tied to the Worms name a lot, you won't think it, but like, there's a lot of games that are really cool that are being published by Team 17. Like, um, uh, I think it's Narita Boy, which is a really interesting uh, indie 2D action platformer on Game Pass. And I didn't even know it was published by Team 17 until I read it. I was like, oh yeah, yeah shit, great. That game is, I haven't played much of it yet. That's a really interesting game. Good job to everyone involved for publishing it. And it seems like, well, there's and another, now, I feel, uh, now I feel bad about it. There's another fairly massive game too, mm-hmm. and that is, um, oh, it was on PS Plus. It's the World War II military shooter. Hell Let Loose. Hell Let Loose. I saw yep. Jack Frags uh, play it in some videos, and that's a game that is just beloved yeah. by that community. You've been wanting a World War II shooter that feels like that, and as somebody who played the Resistance and Liberation Source mod way mm. back in the day, game's totally up my alley. Yep. So lots of real big hits. Also lots of sort of medium tier uh, you know, games, and we'll get into that as well. Yep. It's a rough situation now. With all this roughness going on, the staff then, they have no knowledge of the company's, uh, several teams, sorry, of them, yep. had no knowledge of the NFT plans until just prior to the public announcement. Now, the people who were aware for operational reasons mm-hmm. voiced their disapproval and were ignored. <laughs> yeah, so the people actually doing the stuff went, this is a bad idea, we shouldn't do this, I'm just Head. Yeah, so it's not even like the Ubisoft Strategic Innovation Lab, yeah, where it has a team that's just fuck yeah, let's get some iconic bandanas or something yeah, or yeah. an iconic. No, it's Battlefield 2042 that just uh, gave us a weekly uh, reward, the tactical beanie, and everyone's clowning on it. Uh, yes, uh, I suppose yes. it's a bit like Adrian Pierce's um, iconic, uh, you know, scarf and cap. Yeah, no, you're you're thinking about the uh, 20th uh, anniversary Ghost Recon cap NFT that's... that they've been given. <sighs> 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 Love a cat I like. mean, bored apes, stand down. <laughs> stand down. I mean, this is so much cool. So you got these problems happening, right? Uh, now, this is where it is a bit more rough. Yeah. Staff said support for NFT collectibles had come from the very top of the company. Who is at the very top of the company? Debbie Bestwick. The, she, or the, the CEO. Yeah. Chief Executive Officer. So hmm. this is implying that kind of came from Debbie. Now, that is quite uh, quite a rough thing when we then later in this video uh, will talk about her Facebook posts. Oh, boy. Oh, they're good. <laughs> I, I, I mean, maybe it bodes well for the rest of us that uh, people can get to a position like that and act so stupidly. Maybe, um, yeah. So this at some of the staff who are quite protective of the brand, uh, you know, very, very on edge. Now, these staff were told to keep opinions to themselves. So here was the sort of the company policy here. Team members were instructed to basically keep their opinions uh, quiet. Um, so, you know, I don't ethically believe in NFTs. Does this mean I can't share that opinion in social media channels after the partnership? 
reads an internal FAQ document. So they know what their staff think. Mm -hmm. That's the point. They know and they are expressly ignoring and quashing their opinion. While Team 17 cannot control what Teamsters publish on their social media or other public-facing channels, please be mindful that as an employee of Team 17, you are a representative of the company and its reputation. And in a way... That's true. But yeah, then criticizing right. or embarrassing Team 17, its contractual partners or fellow Teamsters in a public forum could be cause for disciplinary action. Here's the deal. That's all like pretty true. Yeah. That's all pretty true. The thing is, if you're running a company and you're doing something that has resulted in you having to have this in your FAQ, yeah. maybe that's a signal that you are in the wrong business. Yeah. That you need another company full of maybe very excitable Web3 creators who want to do that. Not game developers, game yeah. publishers, game marketers. Yeah. At this, this is this is a fun <sighs> thing as well, right? Because the first read through this, I didn't really twig on to the to the, the part of this that I find now find interesting. So you know, uh, criticizing or embarrassing Team Seventeen, its contractual partners or fellow Teamsters, the public forum could be cause for disciplinary action. Do you think anyone who pushed the NFT project, thus causing tremendous embarrassment towards Team Seventeen, will face disciplinary action, Michael? Uh, well, considering it was the CEO, that would be a no. Yep. <laughs> Not that it seems a, gr a great deal of clemency was shown in the subsequent all hands town or you know town hall meeting. Yep. It's always great, you know, when a town hall has to be called. Mm -hmm. Ah, dear. Right. So let's talk about that. So the Teamsters were informed of the U-turn on the NFTs via a brief town hall meeting that felt like a political apology. Staff said, and they were told the scheme had been planned in the best way possible. <laughs> Our plans are perfect. Yeah, so here, here's a quote from one of these uh, Teamsters. Instead, they did it, and they left it for a day and a half to simmer and see what would happen. It wasn't even that people might lose their jobs if developers pulled their games, or that the company was going downhill, they continued. It was that managers were doing something so monumentally stupid without a thought for those who would actually bear the brunt of it. They didn't apologize to staff, even the community managers who were subjected to a barrage of abuse because of it. Now, that's the rough thing. And see this, uh, you know, it felt like a political apology. So, you know, imagine a politician says, I'm sorry. And then somebody finds that politician's private Facebook page. And what they say in that very much betrays that they're not sorry. I am unassailable. Because <laughs> that's what happens later. <laughs> Workloads have been increasing without adding staff or QA to deal with this. Quantity over quality. Because in 2020, they published uh, seven games. It was eight games in 2021. Uh, it's grown, the publishing schedule, since they went public in 2018. This has led to increased overtime, rushed releases, bosses targeting quantity over uh, quality. An unfortunate situation where the development partners, the studios, they don't actually have... Because you know, sometimes things don't go to plan. Yeah. And they might not have time. And maybe they need an extension. Seems like Team 17 are not particularly willing to do that. Uh, of course, meanwhile, game testers are um, basically despaired after alerting bosses to development issues only to be ignored, with bugs then belatedly fixed post-launch. Mm. Team 17 has signed too many games, is what the staff are saying, including ones with strict deadlines uh, that basically have to be shipped not being ready. In these cases, QA and user research staff say that they've been aware of issues, they've tried to raise concerns with higher-ups, only for them not to be acted upon. Now, the thing to understand, this happens in AAA as well. And this is the crazy thing, where the staff agree, the players agree. The yeah. staff aren't really allowed to let the players know they agree. So the management just sits there trying to profit off getting you to buy a day one sale and not refund it while knowing that the team are going to receive the brunt, even though the team probably, you know, the team are probably in many cases going to be pretty pissed off at the players if people are acting in a genuinely sort of nasty, horrible way. Of course, yeah. But at their core, these are developers who want to do good work. They want to ship polished games and they're, you know, the, the people ultimately controlling the money aren't letting them. Yeah. They, even though it would be in the best freaking interest of the people with the money. Yeah, the, the, the overarching story of video games in, you know, maybe the past 10 years has been, you know, developers and players are basically, you know, being pitted against each other in an arena while the management plays bets and take money yeah. off it. Like, that's what it like, ends up being. Could you imagine if Sony decided to release Ghost of Tsushima before it was ready? Or the same with God of War? Or if Nintendo did that with Super Mario Odyssey? 
Well, they wouldn't because their entire brand would be ruined. But yeah. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> geez, I wonder. <laughs> What's happened everywhere else? Um, so yeah, everyone mm-hmm. I spoke to heaped praise on their fellow team members who worked hard and over long hours. And because of this, they were disappointed. Now, here's yeah. something crazy. QA team mm-hmm. members described pay as being low or terrible with around a 16K base rate up to 19K for more senior uh, QA. Mm-hmm. That's insane. Yeah, that is so tiny. I mean, so 16K uh, gross salary, 40 yeah. hours a week. That's seven pound 70 an hour. Mm-hmm. I'm just sitting here thinking like, <laughs> we pay so much more than that. Yeah, yeah. And we don't, we're not floating with a, you know, a billion <laughs> GBX uh, fucking market cap yeah, on you- the London Stock Exchange, mm-hmm. are we? Yeah, you and Thomas aren't sitting there with 200 mil in the bank. Like, <laughs> This is absolute, yeah. absolute goddamn I mean, madness. The funniest part is even, you know, I remember, you know, before there was anything substantial money-wise in this organization, when I first joined, it was still higher than this. And that was like, really, that was still like, Jesus Christ. This is insane. On. Yeah, um, I mean, obviously, obviously, you know, a, that's base rate. So they likely weren't getting paid below minimum wage. But at the same time, if the base rate's below minimum wage for above 20s, which is, I think it's like 6.89 an hour for people 18 to 20. Oh, dear. So if you're hiring, but it go, goes above 8 quid for um, people above 20. So like if you're hiring a 20-year-old and the base, base rate's 16K, it's like, unless you're making sure that bonus is there, then you are paying below minimum wage. Which is for a, for a skilled and important role, like QA, that's brutal. Yeah. That's so brutal. And QA are better than most gamers think. Yeah, that's the important thing. It's not that QA didn't find the bugs. It's that the people controlling the schedule didn't afford the developers enough time to fix the bugs. Yeah. That's the problem. Like QA usually does a fantastic job and they're so undervalued. It's so unfair. Yeah, I mean, it it is basically literally, okay, you have this much time to make the game and you have this much time to fix bugs. And QA say, well, you need this much time to fix the bugs. And the managers go, no. We've given you your bug fix time. You're like, well, we need more. Like, yeah. Oh, well, too bad. Guess the players will suffer then. Well, the good news is that salaries actually used to be uh, starting at 13k a year, nice. which uh, has been phased out over the last five years. Five years. Um, that is absurd. Yeah. Like, work at your local uh, your corner shop. <laughs> work at your local corner shop three or four days a week to get paid more. <laughs> several people i spoke to had recently departed the company and stepped into an equivalent or similar uh you know role for about 10k more and i saw mike gross who is uh the the head honcho of no more robots they publish yeah. games like um well that zoo game uh, yes your grace as well hmm. and uh, you know he was sort of providing some comment and like oh yeah whenever we hire people from team 17 like we say what the wage is and their hmm. response is fuck yes yeah. Because they are so used to getting such a bad deal. And again, remember, Debbie Bestwick is, like, so well compensated. Yeah. Uh, right? Uh, so the overtime pay is, you know, 1.5x uh, rate, and there's typically a year-end bonus. But, of course, that means that in order to get the decent pay to support your family, to get your rent, whatever, uh, you're having to work late several days a week, do a whole bunch of that. That said, there typically was a cutoff of around 8 p.m. to ensure the team members did not work too long. But the crazy thing, one of the stories is somebody saying that, yeah, they would actually, um, you know, they would do that QA because the company would buy dinner for the people who are staying on to work late. Mm Mm-hmm. And that was the best way they, they could get a quality, nutritious meal because they couldn't afford it in the company salary. Yep. I mean, are you, are you, are, Debbie, are you trying to make a Victorian workhouse? What are you doing? Really? I, I used to it. like respect you before I knew these things. What's going on? Yeah. So, uh, I just did a little bit, a little, a quick, a little bit of mathematics. So, uh, you know what? Okay. We'll say 13K. So say five years ago, 13K now is a gross salary after tax is a monthly net of one thousand and forty pounds. Average oh my God. average rent for a uh, one bed in Wakefield, where they're based, is uh, about five hundred quid a month, or six hundred eighty eight for a two bed, which means you're putting a third to half of your money in rent. Sure, Matt, it's grand. Just you know, throw in your delivery coat and uh, do some of that on the weekends and maybe the evenings as well. Yeah, just work overtime. 
Is he yeah. tough? Wow. Yeah. Wow. This is uh, this is not good stuff. Yeah. Oh, dear. Also, there's some people just saying they were working overtime uh, unpaid. Yeah. Um, so, you know, there's people saying they were skipping meals to save money. Uh, you know that thing where sometimes people are like, do I have heating or food? Uh, people going into the office during the pandemic to reduce their bills. People not able to afford new clothes. Uh, people who got an emergency bill and, you know, were then in their overdraft. Yeah. This was taken to management, uh, taken to HR. Nothing came of it. Being told the wages you are paid are, be, are, are fine, uh, but the people are struggling. Now, obviously, this is a great way to sabotage your own company, which seems like an insane thing for mm. a... You know, that's the thing. It would seem like an insane thing for a big capitalist to do. And that's what I don't understand. <laughs> It's this, like all yeah. these people, you're doing capitalism wrong. Yeah, th th this is short-term exploitation, not profit growth. Like, Yeah, this is not going to be producing fucking long-term shareholder value, is it? No, absolutely not. I mean, that's the thing. I, even I was thinking of this today, even on my walk to work, is like, well, what what do you want What do you want to do as sort of a, a, a manager to employees? You want them coming in, no matter almost what they do, you want them to be, especially, especially if it's creative or especially if it's like, you know, decently uh, skilled or creative work. Obviously, you can still have people who, you know, even even like manual labor that's algorithmic, you can still have people perform their best and that's better for you. So like you want people to be coming in unburdened. The last thing you want is someone looking for bugs in your game and trying to report them accurately and trying to figure out, you know, because obviously, you know, you, you see a bug and you send the dev, you, you can't just say, find bug. You have to go, here's how it's replicated here's you know here's possible theories to look for t if you're a good QA person you'll likely go i have a feeling it's tied to this or here's the specific thing that you may need to look at and that'll save a developer hours from trawling through code to find a bug for sure and you want them capable of doing that which means you want them to be coming in unburdened you do not want them to be coming in going hmm fuck uh can i afford to eat today or ah shit if i you know oh, dude. If, if my car breaks down Am I going to be in my overdraft and am I going to be screwed by oh, the bank for dude, months? I've, I've worked it out. Obviously, Debbie has read the research into cognitive performance when in a state of ketosis and has decided ah. to underpay the staff so much that they just have to fast every day Perfect. in order to produce ketones and have enhanced cognitive performance when at their job. Now, that is genius. That's dystopic genius. Cool. Um, you know, it's quite funny because obviously we operate in this industry and, you know, what have I done recently? I've kind of called out one or two bits of Yuki. By the way, Yuki people are generally lovely yeah. and, uh, you know, I've had a great time at the Yuki booth, uh, you know, but still, you know, you've you got to be real about what's going on because uh, this is an industry that uh, should be serving uh, people who play games primarily, uh, not shareholders. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's, but it's funny, you know, I, I kind of feel like joining the pile on and Debbie is not particularly a rough thing to do, considering lots of other publishers in the UK are doing it as well. I think we all see fucking ghouls like Debbie and think, you know what? Fuck you. Fuck what you're doing to our industry. You fucking scumbag. How, how can you go to sleep at night knowing that you are forcing your employees into poverty? You fucking rat scum. Simple as that. Why do you want to exploit that labor if this is the cost? While you sit pretty, 200 million, with your big fancy custom built house and all these things that we now know about you. Mm. How do you live with yourself doing that? Or do you just look at your bank account and your net worth and think, oh, that's great. Like, like, <laughs> like Bobby. Like Bobby. Do you want to be like fucking Bobby Kotick? Is that it? Is that really how you want to be remembered? Yeah. These fucking people. Yeah, remember them with, you know, uh, what's... what's uh, people's well-being underneath your, uh, let's call it rule, if you instead have shiny awards and money. Yeah. Better, like, obviously. <sighs> Rat scum CEOs like Debbie mm. are fucking radicalizing me in a direction I didn't expect I would go. <laughs> because my thought is now, huh, maybe the staff should be able to just vote her out and get rid of her. Yeah. Welcome. And it gets worse when we get into the fucking personal anecdotes. Yeah, um, right, so there's even a story. Here's a fun one for QA because, you know, yeah. fuck QA, some of the most important game developers that are there mm -hmm. because they'll ensure your game's not a goddamn shit show when it comes out. Uh, so the story of QA not being invited for a photo during a developer visit. Yeah. Apparently it was an oversight, <laughs> but just imagine that. Yeah. Just imagine. By the way, on the way to this photo, they walk past the QA department. Yep. Yeah. You know, uh, one person, though, said, uh, told their team they could not promote the company as they were not photogenic enough. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Very yeah, cool. Sorry, you're too ugly to be part of this company. 
Uh, yeah, so people are saying that things have gone downhill since they lost some of their family atmosphere after going public. Uh, it was about finding and publishing good games. After going public, it's always felt rather tense, like you can't express an opinion or challenge anything for fear of being called negative. And certainly I know lots of situations of people who like to trade on the idea of, oh, hey, we're all pro-women in gaming. We have a four-day work week. We're all this. It's all great, great, great. And let me fucking tell you so many times they are lying scumbags. They are lying through their teeth. I have seen it happen in my personal life yeah. with games companies. It's Remember, whenever people are saying they're doing the good, good boy, you know, happy, happy, clap, mm. clap, goods. Why are they saying it so publicly? Yeah. Is it because they're maybe trying to get some brownie points that they want to trade off? A lot of people do that. Anytime Team 17 does that, I think we obviously know what happened. Because, of course, uh, you know, while we're in a situation where, uh, you know, Debbie's often held up, as like, wow, look at this incredible woman in gaming success story. Well, sexual harassment is not being taken seriously in the company. Failed to act when alerted to issues. Uh, things like women at the studio being sent degrading messages and suggestive photos by male colleagues. Stop where reading. people got a slap in the wrist. If that happens here, I'm firing you immediately. Yep. That's like, what the fuck? <laughs> Just send someone, send someone your junk. Yeah, easy. You're fired. You cannot have that. No, this is insane. No, it's just like a, it's just like a little schoolyard problem. And now you two, you two talk it out. You two talk it out. Like, oh, sure, it was just a, it was just a, you know, I'll show you mine and you show me yours. And, you know, oh, oh, oh. whoops, I did show you mine after. Well, it's well, well, the other way around, yeah, isn't it? The other way around, yeah. Yeah, hmm. Uh, one woman said people are afraid to go to HR because they would just be gaslit. Now, of course, uh, apparently, <laughs> funny enough, the CEO was a part of the problem, almost as if the boss is going to have something to do with issues going on at a company because multiple people are saying there's a culture of presenteeism, which is just that, you know, sort of happy, happy, always be there, you know, thing. Uh, around uh, Team 17 Group CEO, Debbie Bestwick, who co-founded the company and then bought out the other bosses in 2010. It's fair to say that the staff at Nottingham and across the company hold mixed feelings for Bestwick. One of the richest people in the UK games industry has a personal wealth of around 200 million. While many saw their staff bonuses cut, Bestwick was reported to have made £7.56 million. Pounds. Oh yeah, that was a year where they declared record profits as well. Yeah. <laughs> you know what, Debbie? I want you in my industry. Fuck off, you fucking ghoul. You actual fucking reprobate ghoul. Get out of here. There's no point being polite to these people. Yeah, they, I understand. The only thing you can do is actually destroy their reputation for what they fucking do. Yeah, for like, sure. It's like with Bobby Kotick. Oh, hey, we fired 800 people. We've got rampant, all these pro record profits. We Like, yeah. at what point can we just, like, get rid of the pretense and call bullshit when we see it? Um, right, so Bestwick is, I've heard from numerous staff past and present, not shy of discussing aspects of her wealth on social media and in the studio's open plan office. That's so great. Cool. Uh, she, off, she is also often heard openly discussing team members while they're not present, as well as commenting on external development partners. One anecdote I've heard from multiple people involves Bestwick asking staff, uh, minions, I believe, uh, to help wrap her family's Christmas presents for her and that this has occurred over multiple years. So don't you love the idea of, you know, not being able to afford uh, Christmas presents for your family? Yeah, because your bonus was cut that year, despite record profits by up to over a thousand pounds, just gone. And then you're asked <laughs> to help wrap the boss's presents. Oh, that's yeah. lovely. Uh, staff have described her as formidable and mm -hmm. as someone who doesn't take criticism well. I guess we're not going to get that Team 17 publishing deal then, are we? Oh, dear. Uh, but that's fine because I don't think I... You know what? No, I'd be happy to have plenty to do with the Teamsters. Oh yeah, Team Seventeen. Yeah, seem great. Yeah. Uh, yes, Team Seventeen is great. Uh, maybe Leader Seventeen or CEO Seventeen, a bit less great. Yeah. Pressure on her from a particular external partner or from uh, underperforming share prices would lead to that pressure being passed down to other department staff. Set. It's not all bad though. On the flip side. Uh, things seem to have been easier for people closer to the studio bosses. Oh, what's that? Yes, men do well in companies. Uh, staff have mentioned a house near the Nottingham studio paid for by Beswick where uh, some visiting or new staff as well as people in the management's inner circle have been able to live rent-free. Interesting. Isn't so that's that something nice? that costs Bestwick absolutely nothing because yeah. it's a, uh, you know, a property she already owns um, and I guess is covering for the fact that people aren't being paid. 
Yeah, well, I guess yeah, you're, you're yeah. running a large company. Little things like this don't fucking matter. Your job is to set up systems that produce success for your employees. Yeah. It's like, yeah, it's fine. The, the new staff can stay here rent free while they find a place in the area. Just don't let them talk to any of the QA who can't afford to rent a place in the area. Yeah. A day after the Worms NFT announcement, uh, though before its cancellation, uh, people said they read a Facebook post by Bestwick, which has since been shared by Eurogamer. She expressed frustration, angry, with the announcement's reaction and shock at peers who criticized the plans and concluded, I dare anyone to question my ethics, TBH. Ah, yes, Debbie. In a situation where we now know that you were, um, I mean, seemingly barely legal um, Mm. in uh, employing QA staff, in a situation where people are skipping meals for money, cool, cool. Uh, You really shouldn't dare anyone to question your ethics. And there's nothing that you can really say that'll get around these things because ultimately... You're worth like two hundred million. Yeah. You're in a you're you're running a company that everyone in the UK games industry knows. You have a great cash cash position, mm-hmm. so you have a big war chest. It is not out of your fucking realm of control to fix these problems because actually, for some things like staff need heating and rent, mm. money actually solves those problems. Yep, that's that, that's one of the things. It's like people you know expect the easy yeah. problems to solve. Yeah, espe- yeah, this is the thing. Especially very rich people will talk about how money doesn't buy happiness and money doesn't solve all your problems. Except for research. Now, I'm not completely sure on when this research was or the, uh, the uh, I guess, the, the state in which it was done or the circumstances surrounding it. But effectively, money does buy happiness up to a point. Yeah. And that point, I think, is around... I think this was an American study. And it, money does literally buy happiness up until about 100 grand a year. After that, money starts to mean less to people, but that's because all of their basic needs and wants are covered. But up until that point, money buys happiness. So there's an extra, you know, let's say 100 grand. Let's say maybe that turns out to be 80K in the UK. So there's about uh, about 60, about 64 yeah. grand of happiness you could buy your employees if you really wanted to. Well, you'd probably, uh, I guess you might have scaled <laughs> down a wee bit because yeah. I know the Americans have got to pay for health insurance. And then oh, somehow yeah, yeah. after they've paid that, they often have to then oh, yeah. pay even more. Yeah, so and maybe, all of those yeah. weird things yeah. that go on over there. Maybe 60k is fine then. Yeah, which yeah. is it's funny because you, you can get private health care here and it's still infinitely cheaper than what they, they yeah. have to pay for it over there, which is a bit bizarre. Um, now, Debbie posts so many things about being a woman in the games industry um, on Twitter, yet harassment is going on in her company and people are being told essentially that it's not happening. Yeah. See, that's the thing. Ultimately, it's very easy to split people up by, you know so many different things yeah but one of the things is uh well economic class Mm -hmm. that's it's like yeah sure sure you're a woman in the games industry worth 200 million so i don't think your experience is going to be particularly relevant to uh almost everyone else yeah anyone in anyone in the company that you work that you lead yeah, so you're again, we've got a mixed takeaway <laughs> saying that employees desperately want the studio to improve, that there's hope for the future, but staff remain skeptical. Mm-hmm. Without change, departures will continue. I would suggest anyone goes and looks at their glass door. Yeah. Finally, we do have their response saying that they constantly review their internal uh, policies and practices and assess how uh, they support their employees through our engagement survey and through direct dialogue with the team, including newly established employee led working groups, talking about announcing, uh, you know, the the improvements to the way that they pay and reward their teamsters. Um, and they did that in, in January. But here's the thing. You evidently only did that because over the last like six plus months, your glass door ratings have completely tanked. Yeah. So it's almost as if you didn't do this because you thought it was the right thing to do. You did it because you felt like you needed to. Yeah, you're solving because problems. you let the problem happen. Yeah. You could have treated people well and you would have in fact not only would you have avoided many of these dramas, you would have actually had a better company that is more able to hit its financial targets. Why are these people so bad at capitalism? Uh, I imagine it's because the human element kicks in far too hard and they're just kind of, they get up there like, it's, yeah, this is, this, this is my money. I earned I, it. I suppose it's my the, money, I earned it. Half the comments are just going to say, yeah, but you have some weird idealist version of capitalism where people <laughs> actually do the logical, the rational long-term thing yeah. instead of the short-term, give me, give me, give me the money now, yeah. which is seemingly what happens yeah. at these groups. I mean, also it is in, it is technically in human nature to go for the long-term a lot of the time. That's how we survived the species. It's the thing that makes yeah. us pretty neat. Yeah, so maybe, maybe CEOs who work in the short-term are, you know, maybe not ideal for... Well, let's not go there. Yeah, yeah. I, I think, uh, suffice to say, Team 17 could maybe do with a, uh, yeah, a 
different yeah. CEO. Yep, or anyone who is a CEO of, of a games company in no matter where in the world, maybe do a little bit of soul searching in terms of what actually matters to uh, your company and your employees and your users. Because, you know, maybe, maybe you want to do the thing that, uh, I guess it's just a romantic notion of sitting down with an employee and going, yeah, what's up? What, 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 is, what is your problem that we can solve? And if they go, well, you know, car broke down, they're like, oh, well, then that's clearly a problem of, you know, if that's worrying you and you don't go, I'll just pay for a fix. I'll pay for a fix and get a co-worker to give me a lift to, to work for the next two weeks. If that isn't the response of that employee, you're not paying them enough. And if you can't pay them enough, then you shouldn't have hired them with a low salary because you're underpaying for work, clearly. Yeah. Especially and if you and if you can if you can't pay them because executives and the top level people are taking too much money, then you fundamentally I think this is a big thing people have been saying recently. If you can't pay your employees enough to do the job, that is the problem of your business not running effectively enough, and that is firmly your problem, not your employees' problem. Yeah. I just I'm consistently not surprised, <laughs> yeah. but I'm consistently disappointed in yeah. the complete moral bankruptcy of this industry. Yeah. So basically, Teamsters, good luck. I hope you, you can get it. better jobs elsewhere at mm -hmm. a company that values you and doesn't let this shit fester. And the people who are the problem at Team 17, fuck off out of the industry. We're better off without you. Games needs yeah. to be healthy long term yeah. because we're the future of entertainment and you are sabotaging that. Go work for Nestle. Yeah, go work for fucking Nestle. <laughs> That's it. That's it. Um, I could say a few worse things, but I'm not going to. Mm. Right, let's get these ghouls out of the industry. Thanks for listening, everybody. Let us know what you think about this. Mm. Uh, and you know what? If you want good games, we can't have this shit happening because this is what ruins games. And ultimately, the people who are treating their staff like this are the people who want you to buy a broken game day one for max price. So they're fucking you over too. They're just messing everyone over in a short-term rush for profit, and it is killing games. Indeed. And with that, see you later. <laughs>